it is yet another cloudy day here in Garoka. I always seem to say that, but it has been cloudy more times this year than I can remember in the past, at least here in Garoka. As you guys can see, it's a very foggy, but it looks kind of blue up there. We just switched over, well, maybe not all the way, but we just switched over to like a dry season kind of feel to where there's like no clouds in the sky whatsoever. It's perfectly blue, but that means a thicker fog in the morning. It takes a little bit longer to usually burn off, but I'm thinking, I mean, it's 20 minutes till eight now. I'm thinking by probably 8.30, at the latest, it should be cleared up. We're heading out to Yombai Talk today, a beautiful location, really cool up on this ridge. I know you guys are gonna enjoy it out there. It's a really cool approach and everything. So we've got a lot to load up. I don't have any passengers going, coming, so I don't have any seats and I've got a lot of cargo, bunch of carts worth of boxes and stuff for some missionaries. Well, you guys can see it's starting to clear. You can see a little bit of blue back there. It's 8.15 now. By the time I get started to the top, it'll be 8.30, and I think it'll be ready to, ready to get out of here with no dramas at all. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Get our fuel on. All of our levers are back. All of our switches are where we want them. Energy is over 14%. Oil pressure is coming in as high as we can on the first start. We'll go ahead and do a low idle. The pressure is now in the green. Fuel flow is coming up. NG's coming up close to be over 35. And now I'm looking at ITT to 600 almost. All right, we had 980 on the fuel. Let's go ahead and put in 980. Our prop forward now that Titus has gotten our start stick out. All right, we've got a safe flight plan in here. Let's see, down here at the bottom, Garoka, Yambai Talk. If you'd like to fly some of these flights, check out my Patreon page because I've got like over 100 flights that you guys can follow along with, with videos and everything else as well if you're a flight simmer. Weather is good out there. I've already got a weather report out there, so that is nice. Our fuel is on. Our caps have already been checked. Controls are good. Our TAWS is enabled for now. We're going all the way up to 12,000 feet. Like I said, it's just going to be an incredibly beautiful day out there, I'm thinking. So, switches and instruments. Going across, we've got the Z check. All of our frequencies are what we'd like them to be, except for we're going to go 120.1 the next one. Let's get our brake on now. Coming all the way down, and let's head over here to our, let's see, what do we want? We want depart, takeoff performance. 63 knots. Rotate, and if we had to come back in, whoops, 75. The flaps are set, indicated and verified at 20. Our trims have already been set up. Stroke tower, November Tango Echo. Request taxi, Yambai Talk, 1 POV. November Tango, Echo, Gorgata, good morning. Taxi to runway 1, turn left. At the back track and line up, winch light and variable. QNH 1025, time check 4 0. 1025, clear to back track and line up, 17 left. November Tango, Echo. We got our lights and strobe on. Clear left and right. Quite a few birds out this morning. All right, our governor check up to 2070 plus or minus 50. Go with the button, that looks good. And we'll hit send on this so that we can let our flight coordinator know exactly the time we're leaving. Obviously they can see us, but we're gonna board. Um, yeah, we'll get that up here at the top of the hill. All right, old temp's still 49, so we've got a little bit more to go on that. 
it just goes straight ahead. I mean, I've got blue skies off to the left, but I, my maneuverability is not going to be quite as agile, so I'm just going to go straight ahead. I know it's clear ahead. Trim and abort. Uh, we'll be 50 knots by our taxiway, or else we'll just stop on the runway after takeoff. We will pitch for our 85 knots, considering our EPL, considering feather. Otherwise, cut off, pull off, and shut off. 85, then 84 flaps. A beta and warm up the engine a little bit quicker. Our harnesses, which is our seatbelt lock harness. High idle and gov, we've already done. Igniters on, landing, taxi, all those are done. November Tango Echo ready for departure. November Tango Echo, and uh, request your outbound trek. 302, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, and uh, possible traffic hotel Charlie Romeo. Helicopter doing operations with Mikoroka and Mount Auto. Heavy stage tracking to Mount Auto. Runway one zone left, right turn, take off. Copy traffic, one seven left, right turn, left take off. No, I'm taking Echo. All right, ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses, 1390 on the torque. Rotate 63. All right, torque is just about set. There we go. Airspeed's alive. Airs are 50 knots, we're continuing. Airs are 63 and rotate. Bump up our ITT up to 740 though. Uh, it always looks worse on the ground than it does when you get up into the air. Immediately you're like, oh yeah, I can swiggle around these clouds and Maneuver myself around them. All right, look at that. Stayed VFR the whole way. And like I was thinking, perfectly, perfectly blue skies above. It's gonna be a hot one today, that's for sure. Now let's go ahead and get our 10 degrees of flaps. Those wants to drop over just a tiny bit. I'm already looking at the mountains over here just to kind of evaluate how high the clouds are, what's my best plan of action, do I need to go all further out down the valley before I make my turn, but I can see the ridges, so that means that I should be able just to make my head turn now. And we'll go ahead and bring our pop back to 2000 RPM. Broker Tower, November Tango, Echo departed time 4-5, we'll be tracking 302 on climb 1-2000, estimating Yumbai Talk 2-6. November Tango Echo on climb 12000, 15 miles contact Mosby, 120 decimal 1, HF6598. 120 at 15, no, Turn this down to 659 or 8, and go ahead and just. Now you can also see our QH here is flashing. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that down 10, down to 1015, and that's usually pretty close what it needs to be. All right, let's keep on our right hand turn because we need to keep going that way. And now that we're kind of on course where we'd like to be, let's go ahead and set up for autopilot. Not sure if you can see this, but I'm first I'm gonna hit my heading button here that centers up the bug, um, the little thing right there. And then I'm gonna hit heading mode. That way it's at least flying the direction that I want it to go. And then I'm going to hold heading and hit nav, nav, and it's going to say nav, GPS, S, so GPS steer. Now, this autopilot here does not have an airspeed hold. It only has a vertical speed hold. So basically what that means is like I can climb, I'm climbing at 800 to 850 feet per minute right now. Now, if I hold that, it's going to try to maintain that same pitch to be able to do that. But the higher we go, the altitude or the air is a little bit thinner so it's not going to perform as well. So it's going to try to hold that same, you know, pitch to go all the way up 800 feet per minute, and then it's going to start bleeding your airspeed off the higher you go. So what I do, and you can do in any airplane, is just trim out the trim it out for your airspeed. I'm at about 105 to 106 right now. It's trimmed, and the air, I mean, the vertical speed will kind of bounce around, probably between 500 and 900, kind of just go up around. It's staying pretty steady right at 700 now, but that's the easiest way until I get to just a couple hundred feet below 12,000, our desired altitude, then I'm going to go ahead and set up my autopilot 
to just automatically level me off. Oh, I forgot to mention the reason why I did the GPS steer is because as we get closer to this magenta line, it's going to go ahead and just automatically connect into it. And like I was saying, if you do want to maybe get into flight simulator stuff, but you don't really know how to do anything with flying, you're just interested in aviation, but you'd like to, I've got a course for you guys that walks you through a couple hours on the basics of flying, specifically in the Kodiak, but it's transferable to really any airplane. Oh, if you'd like to learn how to fly enough to where you could go fly some flight simulator stuff, or you want some specific training on the Kodiak, then check out this link down below, my Kodiak course. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. We're going to have to parallel this right here because if I come over here to map, hit terrain, you can see the terrain at Mount Wilhelm. It goes all the way up to 15,000. We're only going up to 12,000. So I'm going to have to just skirt the edge of it, and then once I get past that, then we'll get back on track. Here we go. There's 200 to go, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit my vertical speed and altitude select together. And that will go ahead and just level me off automatically. Morris B1201, November Tango Echo, transfer. November Tango Echo, Morris again. Good morning, November Tango Echo, 15 miles to the west, northwest of Garoka, maintaining 12,000. Estimating Yon by Talk 26. Number Tango Echo, 1 2000. Say again, estimate for Yamba Talk. Time 26, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, Eric QNH 1010. Traffic, Hotel Lima Victor Bell 212 helicopter. Departed Mount Hagen for WIWEC. There's a very thin at about 10,000. Departed Hagen at time 2250. We'll be trekking via ATCAP for WIWEC. Estimated work at time zero zero one tickets. Copy traffic one zero one zero November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo secondary HF six five nine eight. Six five nine eight. November Tango Echo. All right, so that traffic yeah, right there. He's departed Mount Hagen. He's heading for the Ad Gap, and he's going up to Weewac. So yeah, he's going to be going up this way. I mean, we still have 35, 29 more minutes to go, so he's going to be well, well ahead of us. But that's all right. Now, quite a few clouds up here, so we'll have to figure out how we're going to get down. I, I, it doesn't look like it's a full-on overcast. It does maybe a little bit out more towards the Seapik area. But if that's the case, we'll have to come up with a new plan of action, how we're going to get back all the way down to sea level and into Yambai Talk. Well, here's all the bumps. Looking ahead, it looks a lot thicker than I was originally planning. So, what I think I'm seeing here, I mean, I mean it's just a full-on blanket as far as I can see that way, and it's kind of broken up that way. There might be a little bit of a hole right down in there. So, I'm thinking that it's going to open up over top of it, but I don't know. Looking out that way, it still looks, I mean, like a blanket. Maybe not quite as much more towards WIWAC. We're coming up on our top of descent here. Let's see if we head over here to flight plan um, in four and a half minutes. Uh, so I could start down now early, and I know I could fly the river up. That is an option. I've taken you guys down that river before. It's really, really beautiful. But by myself. I think I'm going to hold my altitude on this time rather than going down because I kind of want to see if it breaks open really close over top. That way I, I, I kind of get an idea of maybe what it's going to do in the future as well because this is, I mean, the weather, as unpredictable as it is, it is sort of predictable over here as well. It does have trends on where the weather builds. There is a hole right down through there that I could dive bomb through, but I think we're just going to stick with the original plan for today and, and see how it plays out. Definitely this is not exactly what I was expecting for weather, that's for sure. Well, before we head on down, let's go ahead and go over the airstrip chart. Make sure it's right. Let's see, our landing performance is 73 knots. I've already put that in. I've already clicked my thing. Let's come on back here to 
Arrival tab. It's Yambai Talk. We've got a 100 kg landing penalty. But we've already burnt that fuel off, so that's not a problem. We're going to be coming across the field like this and entering in and at 900 feet. MSL is where we're going to be turning our correction. Yeah, 900 feet MSL is where we're going to be turning our final. It's just basically right at a little bit of a tree right on a hill. That's how I know where to turn my final. If we scroll on down, you guys can see, yeah, it's just a really beautiful place out there. It's a flat runway. It is still a Class C for us, just because it's a little bit shorter. I mean, it's only 600, uh, 600 feet, but then it is 515 meters long. Not quite at my minimum safe, or I don't know what my minimum safe is here, so can't quite go through these clouds. But then we'll just drop right back down, and it looks like the clouds drop significantly right after this cloud right here. Uh, no, nope, never mind. <laughs> Not enough. Oh, so, let's see. Back on track now. That might help open up the valley. I'm kind of hoping that the valley is opening up here. Like right over top of Yambai Talk is where I think that it will open up. But we'll see. We've got 24 miles to go. Selectors and brakes are good. Our TAWS is turned off. Our lights and inlets, we'll get here in a minute. Probably could have just gone underneath of it way back there, but we've got enough fuel if, if worst case scenario, if I still cannot see it when I get over top of it. Go ahead for Michael Polima. All this green area out here, I'm gonna go out there and then make my descent through the clouds over top of all the green because there's there's no mountains out there. So just in case that's the case, we'll be heading out there and then we'll drop down. All that out there is basically sea level, um, but let's just say it's even 100 feet. I know it's not because there's literally nothing out there. But we'll go ahead and go down to 2,000 feet MSL over top of out there. And it's a straight line descending out from Yambai Talk, but I'll wait till I get past the mountains before I really start my descent. If that's the case. Oh, it's always good to have plan A, B, and then have C. Worst, worst case. I can't get down in there. I can always head back to Garoka. Our lights and inlet now. If you guys have not seen these, this is one of your first videos. You guys have to check this out. You guys, uh, this is a buddy check. It's a toggle checklist for takeoff and landing. It covers your critical takeoff and landing items. I've got them for 152s, uh, more complex planes that can go up into multi-engine, also a turbine, which is what this is. And then I also have the option you guys can customize them if you want to have one specifically for, specifically for your airplane. You can now get them custom to say whatever you'd like. These things are so nice. This is backlit, you can't tell because it's doesn't light up very much. It's basically the same density as all like the interior lights and the same color. But such a handy tool, especially flying single pilot. If you're one of those guys that doesn't get around flying very often, maybe like 15 hours a year or something, I highly recommend picking one of these up. It could definitely save your life from doing something stupid and landing with your gear up because you don't fly very often. Okay, clouds are a little bit dropping off over here, so if I zoom in, right over top of the river is going to be my best option. That's where temperatures are going to be a little bit different with the water and things, and clouds always just build up on the tops of the mountains, so I'm still 9,000 feet. I've got a long ways to go on my descent. Ah, it's not looking hopeful. I really can't go any lower either because now the clouds are going back up, so. Okay, I should have gone down earlier. Wait, no, is that a hole? Oh, that's a hole. I'm going down. Nice. Our prop forward. And let's bring our torque on way back. Here we go. The one hole. Let's swiggle our way down here to hear it. 1,800 feet per minute. Perfect. Well, when we come out of here, when I get out, I'm going to fly down the river with you guys. I'll just do a time lapse back to Garoka. 
So stay tuned. By the time I get out of here, it might have already been cleared, but who knows. All right, if we have to go around, this one is a late final left-hand turn. Power up 20 degrees, pitch for 12 degrees on the outdoor indicator, and reset our max torque because we're nearly at sea level. This is way more clouds than I was expecting to be out here. It's all right. They said the weather's good here at Yambai Talk, so I'm assuming that they don't have clouds on the runway. Over here, the runway heading is 21. So let's go ahead and put 21 on there. 210. All right, looking. And it looks like the circuits, yeah, is wide open, so that's nice. Floors B1285, November Tango Echo. In the circuit, Yambai Talk, report after landing. November Tango Echo. All right, landing lights are all on. Winds have dropped down. Now there are four knots coming out of the sea peak area, so I might have a little bit of a tailwind. I can take up to five knots of tailwind. Coming into here. 500. Not very, not very much. I'm going to come over here so I can look at the runway out my left window. There's our 1600 feet, so let's go ahead and level off. Slow on down so I can get my flaps starting to come in. Runway is looking nicely cut. Right at the windsock, there's a dirt spot. That's the place I'd like to touch down at. I don't see anybody on the runway. 20 degrees of flaps. Windsock is just hanging there limp, so that's good. Oh, 93 here on downwind, 83 on base. 500. come out 1.3 miles before we make our turn, which is basically kind of just past this little hill right here. Actually, now I'm gonna go 1.4. There we go. 1.83. Go full flaps, checklist is complete. All right, we want 73 500. on final. We want 73 on final. head to these trees and get to be about 78 and then as I'm turning final I'll just bleed off that last few knots. Not the tailwind. Alright, those are 78 knots. Kind of bounce around a little bit. Here's the tree. Turning final. Now it's crosswind. It's 550 on the descent, 73. All right, looking good, we're committed. Floated a little bit past where I wanted to, but it's cut nicely, though. All right, guys, if you want to see the return flight, I think I'm going to hang out with these guys for a little bit. It might clear, but it might not, so stay tuned and see how I get home.